Welcome back, everybody. My name is Grace, or Gibby, whatever you prefer, and today I wanted to talk about the new player experience in Adventure Quest, my favorite game. AQ is a pretty crazy game to get back into in 2023. Some of the game is exactly the same as when you played it when you were eight years old, just getting home from school. Like you can see right now, uh, me doing the Mage Quest, I remember doing this as a kid. Awesome stuff. Some of it, however, is a little bit different. You can see here I'm using a super wacky combo and one-shotting a boss with Backlash, which didn't even exist back then. So the game is definitely modernized, but you can get the best of both worlds, old and new, which is awesome. So there's a lot to be done in Adventure Quest, but where do you start? If you want to protest your character, the good thing is that early leveling in Adventure Quest is pretty much a solved formula. If you're interested in power leveling, getting as high level as possible as quickly as possible, the wiki is a great resource, linked in the description, as is my YouTube channel. It's much faster if you have a house, but you can still get almost to level 40 in about half an hour from a fresh account. Uh, check out the video in the top corner if you're interested. I won't go over it in detail here, so I can get more engagement on my other videos instead. Um, but seriously, it would take too much time. So basically, you start off fighting this undead dragon, switch to this Minecraft copyright strike of a quest, go back to fighting a different undead dragon, or the same one as the beginning. They're about the same speed. Not too complicated, but it really does slow down past level 40 if you don't have a house, which costs 188 tokens. The wiki leveling section is also linked in the description, so feel free to check that out. Remember how I said that leveling is solved in Adventure Quest? Well, the good thing is, from level 1, you can reach your XP cap for the day in less than an hour. Um, XP is capped in AQ. You can only get a certain amount every day. The system is kind of scuffed, but it is what it is. From level 35 onwards, though, until level 90, you can reach it in about 45 seconds with an optimal uh, power leveling method. This means level grinding isn't hard, which is great, but it can leave players bored, feeling like there's nothing to do after you spend two minutes maxing out your level for the day. So, hence this next portion of the video, what can you do after you finish grinding XP for the day? The first thing I want to recommend is quests. AQ is, first things first, a story game. Some of the stories are funny, some of them are outdated and funny because of how old they are, some of them are genuinely interesting, and some of them are quite compelling. The rough thing about AQ stories is that a lot of them require background knowledge. Luckily, I'm going to filter out some quests that don't need that, and you can just play them raw. The Chessmaster Saga. This is my personal favorite quest saga. I'll give you a bit of a teaser and just some background information on NPCs and the story. The elemental orbs are magic, powerful artifacts for each element. Paxia is an island with eight clans for the eight major elements, so of course they're interested in these elemental orbs and what's going on with them. The numbered beasts are magical, numbered creatures that nobody knows about, until the end of the saga at least. Kamui is a mad scientist and a wizard. Karuna is the adoptive mother of a ghost and a witch, or something, I honestly don't even remember, but she's a mom, that's all you really need to know and Jacques is a guy who just loves fishing. Now you're ready to go on this saga. There's like 25 quests. It's a great time. The Devourer Saga is Adventure Quest's most famous saga. Luckily, there's not much background needed. There's a spooky, ominous force messing around with the world of lore, and that's all you really need to know. Mechanically, this is the oldest saga in the game that's still around to be played, so some of the quests have been updated up until where you can see the red star um, and of course the ones with nice buttons have all been updated, and the rest are generally a bit scuffed, but they do work just with a couple funky scaling monsters here and there. There's tons of other quests for individual stories without too much background information. I recommend Warlick's quest section. A majority of them are just fun stories and quite self-contained. The most recent quests are actually sagas, and they require some background knowledge, but they're also the most updated and with the most interesting boss fights and item rewards, so you'll get cool items and the monsters scale exactly to your level. But that's enough about quests, let's talk about some permanent unlocks for your account. 
These are pretty simple. Class quests are you just pick a class, buy the class's armor, and then unlock more abilities and get more power in that class armor. There's a ton of classes. I'm not going to talk about them in detail here because it would take too long. But in general, you work through one of the tier 1 classes, like Mage, Fighter, Rogue, or Archer. Then you can do tier 2 classes, like Knight or Wizard. And then finally, you can do some ultimate tier 3 classes, like Paladin, Necromancer, and that's pretty much it. But Paladin and Necromancer unlock two of the strongest armories in the game, and they're completely free to play. So I really recommend playing through the classes at some point. The 10th and 20th anniversary quests are two rare types of quest sagas because they're not playable out of order, initially at least. To unlock each quest, you have to play the quest immediately before it. See on my fresh account how I'm immediately thrown into a fight and then I click the 10th anniversary, but on my main account, I can see the entire sequence of quests and pick and choose what I want to do. It's the same with the 20th anniversary, although with a few less quests. So if you want to progress your account, Unlocking these quests is a great thing to do, especially since there's some killer items in some of the later quests of both sagas. Lucretia's potions are the last unlockable set of quests. There are other quests that unlock things permanently, but none of them are as significant. Uh, her potions give you a passive buff for your entire login. So there's one that makes you resistant to poisons, one that makes you slightly more accurate, one that makes you have a very high chance to attack first, they're all quite useful. However, if you enter her shop first on a fresh account, you won't find anything. Once you've completed all the quests, however, and the Rescue Lucretia quest, which I'll talk about in a moment, you can enter her shop and there she is, ready to tell you about the potions. To get into her shop on a fresh account, you need to go across the road to the tavern, go upstairs, and talk to her bestie Thalia, who sends you on a quest to rescue her. Once you rescue her, her potion requirements, her potion quests, have ingredient requirements. You want to use the wiki guide for her potion ingredients, otherwise it'll take you ages looking all around the game without knowing. One more thing you can do while you're leveling is getting ready to optimize your build. One great thing about adventure quests is that you can upgrade a majority of items without redoing the quest. Let's say at level 15 you quest for the best warrior energy armor in the game, H series. When you get to level 35, you can go into the account manager online on the main Arctic's uh, website and upgrade it. So even at a low level, you can start optimizing your build because you can just upgrade the items later. I'm not going to talk about optimal build items because there's hours to cover, but if you're interested, look at the wiki's build guide section, again, linked in the description. Pick and choose what the items you like are or what you just find cool. That's pretty much it. Whether you woke up one morning and decided to go on a nostalgia trip, watched a much larger YouTuber's video, or you just discovered Adventure Quest. I don't think that still happens, but maybe. Either way, though, I hope you enjoyed, hope you enjoy the game, and I hope this guide is helpful. Spread some peace and love, and have a great day. Bye-bye.